Hi there, it's Nicole from Mix and Match Monday, and this is a series that I'm trying to do about once a month where I share a card that features products from several different manufacturers all combined to create a fun design. This is one of my very favorite ways to create cards is mixing and matching. I have been wanting to use the My Favorite Things Bundles of Blossoms background stamp forever. It is gorgeous flowers. There's lots of great ways to use it. I have a piece of Bristol Smooth cardstock here. It's A2 sized, so five and a half by four and a quarter inches. And what I did was remove the foam piece from the Misty and I put a little ad temporary adhesive there on my scrap paper in the Misty to keep my cardstock in place because I really can't use the magnets for this because I want to completely cover the background with the My Favorite Things Bundles of Blossoms background stamp. I am using Lawn Fawn Jet Black ink and I inked it up several times because I don't want any faint areas. This is fantastic. The Misty is fantastic for stamping background stamps, especially detailed ones like this. I chose to use Bristol Smooth cardstock because I wanted to do some Zig Clean Color Real Brush Marker coloring. And the Zigs work so beautifully, blend so beautifully on this cardstock. I am not using any water. You totally could if you wanted to. Instead, I am laying down my dark color first and blending it out with a lighter color. I will be skipping through some of this. A lot of it is repetition. After I got some of my base colors down, um, that large blue flower, there'll be several of those. The green leaves are all gonna be colored with these same colors. All of the colors, the number and the color name are shown across the bottom of the screen for reference. But again, once I have those base colors down, I will skip through any additional ones or I've really sped up the coloring. It did take a little bit of time. I'm not gonna lie. Um, my daughter even said to me, part of me thinks you're kind of dumb for doing this and part of me thinks it's really pretty. <laughs> um, and it kind of made me laugh. I thought it was really funny. If you follow me on Instagram or Facebook, I posted about it, but she's kind of right. It is a ton of work, but it's also really relaxing. This is a project I did on the weekend. It's almost like those coloring book pages you see out there. Um, maybe you even have some of those and you color them. It's just a relaxing, fun project, and the end result is stunning. Would this be a card that I would create multiples of? Absolutely not. This is kind of one of those, I call them one and done, <laughs> um, where you do one of these cards and you don't do it again. Uh, in fact, my daughter was reminding me of a Santa card I created around Christmas time where I stamped an image multiple times and colored it in with colored pencils to completely cover the background. It too took several hours to color. Um, and she's right. Those are cards that you send to someone special. These kind of cards are something that you send to someone who you know will appreciate them. If you want to create some stunning cards with this same background stamp, I'm gonna be sharing some ideas for that um, a little bit later. Something that could be created, or you could create many of them much easier and still have gorgeous results. But if you're wanting to just color, this is also a fantastic image for that. I think it would be beautiful in colored pencils, it would be beautiful with Copics or other alcohol ink markers, watercolors, You, the sky's the limit. Anything you like to color with, this is a fantastic image for that. And the detail is just stunning. There's also a lot of room for uh, forgiveness, I guess you wanna say, where maybe you don't color it quite right, but there's so much going on, you may not even notice it. And really, there were probably a few places I missed. It's just so detailed and involved. I didn't use more than really two shades per color family for most of the flowers. The pink is the only exception, and that's mostly because I wanted to get some depth, and so I pulled in a little bit lighter color than the two darker ones that I originally that I originally uh, chose for that. But otherwise, it's about two shades. I did try to keep the each flower somewhat monochromatic. 
and then tried to build my flowers with a nice assortment of colors. So I've got my royal blue, I've got the yellow, I've kind of got a pink, uh, orangish red, then I've got this turquoise color that I'm coloring now. And from that, I am simply going to build out. So meaning I try, I kind of started in one area and I'm working my way out from there and I'm repeating a lot of the flowers. You could also go totally different with all of them if you wanted to. I did not want to pull out even more markers or figure out more color combinations. And I liked the repeating pattern or the, re the repeating flowers, I guess I want to say more than the repeating pattern. A lot of the flowers are similar, so I just kind of tried to do them randomly with those same colors. So you can see there's a trio of the dark blue ones there. There's also going to be three of the turquoise flowers like that. There'll be several pink ones here and there throughout the design, several yellows, several reds, and then all of that greenery mixed in. There's also quite a few little red dots. I kind of call them little berries. I just touched those with my red zig marker and colored them in. Really fun. I just can't say enough great things about this image. It was a really, really fun design to color. And like I said, sending this to someone special, I think it will really brighten their day. After everything was colored, I took the Simon Says Stamp bundle of stitched shapes. This is a die collection that's quite a bit older, but it's got this fantastic rectangle with a stitched design. So it's gonna be slightly smaller than A2 sized once I die cut it. In fact, if you wanna save that little outer frame that's got color, you could do something fun with that as well. In fact, I'll show you here. I centered it pretty well that I have a great little colorful frame that could be added to something. I chose this die collection because it also has a straight line die with some stitching detail so that I can die cut two panels from my background. I'm cutting a little strip. That's where I'm gonna stamp my greeting on my card base itself, but this allows me to do that so easily. So you can see I just put it at a diagonal, taped it down with a little low tack tape, die cut my top area, then I'm going to leave a little strip just wide enough for a greeting from the Hero Arts stamp and cut hello. Go ahead and I'll remove the top there real quick. I'm going to tape that down. I just eyeballed it. You could definitely measure it if you wanted to. And I'm going to die cut that little strip from it. Now I'm going to hold on to that little strip there because it's going to help me perfectly align everything. I've got my card base. I've got my top panel. I've got my bottom panel. I'm using magnets in my Misty to hold all of that in place. I'm just going to reinsert that little die cut piece or strip there so I can perfectly arrange where everything's going to go. I will put another magnet along the bottom, lift out that piece that I'm discarding, and then I'm going to grab the greeting, you brighten my day. I thought that went fantastic with these bright flowers. And I am going to position that along that strip somewhere. I'm using the Misty so that I can make sure and get a really precise stamped greeting exactly where I want it to go. So once I have that figured out, I've got my die cut hello that I'll be die cutting here in a minute as well for the rest of the greeting. I'm gonna ink that up with a black ink and stamp that. Now this is where you're gonna see that the Misty is fantastic. The word you didn't stamp all the way. So I'll just go ahead and ink that back up and stamp it again. I can remove everything now. I've got a little piece of fun foam. I will apply stick it to both sides of this, run that through my Big Shot, so that the stick it is really well adhered to the fun foam. And then I will remove one of the sides of stick it and place that little black cardstock piece scrap there to one side. This is my favorite way to create a dimensional greeting. Dimensional greetings just immediately add that nice little wow factor to a card, and they're one of my favorite things to do, especially with a beautiful script greeting like this Hero Arts Hello. So I die cut that from my sandwich. I'm going to just poke out all those little areas in the loops, and then I can attach that right to my card. I've not adhered anything yet. Right there 
along the floral. Now to make it pop even more, I will be applying a layer of glossy accents to that, but first I need to go ahead and put these pieces right to my card base. So I'm just going to go ahead put adhesive all over everything. In fact, this is where that little piece comes in handy again. I wanna make sure I get it lined up perfectly. And there you go. There is my colorful card base with that little cutout strip and stamped greeting. I'm gonna take my glossy accents, which I have a fine tip applicator on top, and I am going to go ahead and trace over this whole thing. It's gonna leave me with this black glossy greeting, and I think the glossy really helps make the greeting pop from the background even more than just the solid plain cardstock does. It dries pretty quickly. Go ahead and finish that last little loop there. And then some finishing details. I'm applying some, I'm making my own enamel dots with the Nouveau Crystal Drops in Morning Dew and Ebony Black. I think the black adds a really fun little touch and helps tie in the black of the greeting. The Morning Dew is one of my all-time favorite Nouveau Crystal Drops. I think it looks like dew drops and so it's perfect, especially for a floral design. Just a scattering of these throughout the card they definitely don't show up as well as the black. They more, they add more texture than anything. So in real life, you're gonna see them a little bit more. Go ahead and add just a couple more of those. I will also take the smallest heart from the Hello Hero Art stamp set that I used, ink it up with plastic flamingo ink. I've got these little cubes here from Lawn Fawn. This is the gazebo ink cube pack and the plastic flamingo cube is in here. I'll ink up the little heart and stamp that at the end of the greeting. Adds a nice little touch to that cutout strip with a little bit of color. These little ink cubes are fantastic if you want to try out some of the Lawn Fawn inks and don't know which colors you might like for your collection. Also, if you're short on space, they're fantastic. I'll take a black pen and I'm going to add some little dots and I'm just turning this around so I keep my hand out of the Nouveau Crystal Drops, and add some little dots to finish off my greeting. Thanks for joining me for this Mix and Match Monday card featuring a bold, colorful background with all of these gorgeous flowers. The supplies I used are listed and linked below the video here on YouTube. Here are a couple more videos featuring floral designs that you might be interested in. Thanks for watching, and we'll catch you next time.